Hey, what's going on everybody? Brandon Charleston here coming at you with another tutorial. GPT-40 Mini just dropped by OpenAI and right now it's definitely catching waves because it claims to have a lot of uh, great performance uh, use cases, uh, especially from a cost per cost effective perspective. Very cheap, uh, apparently it's walking circles around uh, GPT-3.5. And so what I'd like to do is just show you some of the use cases that I've done, some of the comparative analysis at scale for platforms like Clay, and then uh, we'll dive right in. So before we do that, largely language models by and large um, they're usually three different tiers that uh, have recently come out and usually you'll have your small your medium and your large size the thing with these mini uh, large language models uh, from what I've seen is that they'll definitely need a lot of context and a lot of prompting in order to get the output that you want so in this instance I'm going to show you some of the techniques in order to do that as well as compare it to uh, you know GBT 40 mini as well as Claude's uh, haiku which is currently uh, their lar their smallest uh, large language model and then Gemini 1.5 uh, flash which is uh, Google so we'll go ahead and dive in and go from there so you can see right here that I am in a clay table. And then what I did is I just experimented. I just pulled up uh, a table, a blank one. And all I did is I punched in, um, you know, I start with a thousand and I'm like, okay, this is maybe too much. Uh, but essentially what I did is I pulled up CEO founders in the United States uh, with at least 20,000 followers on LinkedIn. And then I limited to a uh, thousand results. Uh, but just to get the use case and let the run, you know, happen a lot faster, I just ran it uh, half the table. So, um, so what I did is I also enriched the profile. So you can see here a list of names, and I don't want to bore you with this large table and things like that. But you can see some pretty popular names uh, like Hugging Face, for example. And then you have a multitude of different companies, and I wanted to pull that because there's a lot of different fuzzy areas, if you will, data, uh, which large language models can help. And I made a post recently on LinkedIn about using uh, formulas versus large language models to help kind of uh, formulate unstructured data or fuzzy data in order to uh, normalize names, for example. And so that was one of the use cases that I want, wanted to uh, compare is a prompt uh, that'll do just that. And so you'll see here, I have, there's the common things, um, but you'll see Haiku uh, is the first one, and then GPT-40, and then I also did uh, Gemini 1.5 uh, Flash, the, which is their small model, right? So uh, the, and just as a disclaimer, I use the exact same prompt uh, for each and every one of them. I do not change a thing. And so just for context for this first use case, I just said, Based on the input, name below, output a normalized first name, ensuring it is properly formatted. Very closely analyze the name and ensure it sounds proper to greet them in an email. And then I gave some use case examples of what it is. Now the thing here about this particular one, and I'll show here, is sometimes you'll have like a doctor uh, so-and-so, sometimes you'll have like this, for example, you have Charles Chuck Pope, which you know, signifies that he prefer to go by Chuck. And then you'll have uh, obviously uh, capitalized Mark, which this could be solved with a formula, you know, as far as capital M and then Mark. Uh, but then you'll have other, like this one, for example, Dan Daniel Dan Hill, which is in quotes, right? So you'll want to use uh, AI, in my opinion, uh, to really just understand kind of what they're looking for because people put their names in all sorts of different ways. Sometimes they'll put in parentheses, of their maiden name, uh, women will do that, which obviously if it's consistent, you don't wanna call them by their maiden name. So from my experience and comparing Haiku with GPT-40 Mini and then also Gemini 1.5 Flash, it actually was really, really close. Uh, in fact, I would say it's like the minorest of all things. So you can see right here, it says Charles Chuck Pope and it obviously, output Chuck consistently across the board here, right? Uh, another one too is we have Mark, so it did pretty well there. There was a couple other ones. Okay, Dan. So you can see all three of them output Dan exactly how I want it to be output, so that's great. There was a couple other instances where I think we had a doctor uh, listed on here. We have a couple doctors. So Liam 
is also another one that's consistent, which is just all caps. That's really not a whole big deal. Oh, look, we have Mr. Tim Tebow in here. He made it on this table. Good deal. All right. And then um, here's another interesting one. So you have U.S. Olympian Johnny Quinn, right? So that's obviously a big full name, uh, at least titled on his LinkedIn, but clearly it output the name Johnny, right? So for things like this, you'll see that this is where AI will be able to take the full name, for example, and be able to really distinguish, uh, you know, what is the first name, right? And so uh, what were the, that, was a, that was a really good use case that I discovered uh, for titles like that or full names like that. So uh, continuing on just a little bit more, you can see right here, uh, we have Dr. Rowe, and then you can see Ronika Thomas. And so it's interesting because I'm not quite sure, you know, it would seem as though Ronika would be how, is her full name. So maybe she goes by Rowe, I'm not sure. But nonetheless, you can see all three of them output Ronika. So it's still clean. It still gets the job done. Um, and I would probably roll with it. So moving on to uh, any other use cases here, just to, okay, here's another good one. So we have Theodore Ted, right, Colbert III. So you can see uh, for that, and it's in parentheses, but you can see all three of them, again, I'll put Ted, right? So really, I guess the only difference here is what's cheaper, right? Because if they're consistent and they're outputting the same thing, then in this particular case, to normalize a name where there's a lot of fuzziness. Uh, and again, here's another one, Harold Hackey. So clearly, this person prefers the nickname Hackey, right? So if we were to say, hi, Hackey, it's very consistent and and it works just fine. So that's it on the normalized uh, comparison. So in my opinion, it's 100% all consistent. So I guess the differentiating factor here is what's cheaper, right? And so GPT-40 Mini, I haven't, uh, I don't have the pricing right in front of me, uh, but you can definitely compare those and then all three of them very much uh, work consistently. One thing I did realize though, uh, and is about speed is Gemini 1.5 flash was definitely a lot faster to get the job done. So it took a little bit more compute time when it comes to GPT-4 on Mini. And I ran this direct this directly uh, for their, uh, via their API. And so calling that because it's not quite implemented into uh, Clay. And so, uh, so I just ran a direct API. And so interestingly enough, Gemini was faster to respond in, in this instance. And so, uh, so your experience might differ, uh, especially when it comes to Claude and then rate limits and things like that. And so, uh, but yeah, so I guess price and speed would be the differentiating factor here. So moving on, uh, another use case is using AI agents, right? A lot of times we'll uh, use an AI agent to do a task, which is usually identify if a company is B2B or B2C. And then you also do a use case where you're like, hey, uh, visit the website and tell me what product or service they offer or who they're um, who they usually sell to or something to that degree right so I went ahead and uh, made a prompt saying you're a sales development representative and expert research assistant doing analysis on what product or service they offer your task is to visit the company names website which is listed below and to only or to output briefly what types of products or services they offer Based on your analysis, output if they are a B2B company, B2B C, B2C company, or both, followed by a brief summary of what types of products or services they offer. And then I said visit this website, and then I gave example output one, two, and three, right? So I did a B2B, a B2C, and then both, because we want to identify and I want to know exactly what it is. And that's the thing I'm talking about here is with small, large language models, you want to end to end say exactly what their task is exactly step by step and then exactly what the output is right you just don't want to say visit the website and tell me what they do you don't want to do something like that uh, especially for the smaller models is because you're just going to get a whole lot of fluff and it's going to hallucinate more and you're not quite sure and so the only other thing that i would probably add to this if i didn't which i didn't in this case is confidence level or to actually clarify like hey if you're not sure or if your confidence level is for example 90 percent or below just output no information found or something exactly so i can filter that out and so clagent uh for this clagent i used haiku 
um, the smallest model there for Claude. And uh, that I wanted to use the native Claygent uh, just because it's very popular. Obviously, it's a key player uh, with all things clay. And it did a great job uh, as far as I'm concerned. So based on the information, it says you can see the prompt here. It, it kind of, um, you know, my goal here was to, based on the output, is to say like what it is, like B2B, colon, and then say what it is. I want it to be a consistent output there. So you can see based on that output, it's not consistent. It, it, it probably is outputting good, accurate information, but it's not structured in a way that I wanted it to be uh, said, right? It just says based on the information gathered or uh, the, the HT group is this. And then uh, let's see here for, for my, where's my, where's my hugging face at? Um, so for, for example, hugging face, um, if you're not already familiar with Hugging Face, uh, you should definitely get on it, especially if you do things like AI, because it's a great platform similar to GitHub, uh, where you just get to play with all the models and uh, have a lot of fun with it. So you can see here, I mean, it's just ton of fluff, right? Uh, based on the information gathered, visiting the Hugging Face website, it just basically gave me a ton of information about everything. Now, that's not really a big deal, because that means there's a lot of context. But if we're trying to be cost effective here, I mean, this this was a fraction of a cent. I mean, this is 0 0.002 uh, of a cent uh, for something like this. So obviously you can let it rip, you know, with as much information. But nonetheless, when you're doing things at scale, especially large tables, it's tokenization uh, costs money and time, right? So that's the biggest thing here. Now, moving forward, I went a little bit deeper with the AI agent stuff since uh, I love just programming my own agents. You know, it's definitely a time to uh, attach agents to tools and functions like a web scraper, for example. And in this case, what I did was I built out, uh, it's a template on N8N's uh, template, uh, which I did a video on and showed on LinkedIn as well. But this is essentially a React AI agent. Uh, React basically means to receive or uh, you know basically receive a task and then act upon it. Um, and so what you want to do is this is an AI agent, right? So this this essentially is going to take orders. And so uh, I set it up as a webhook, not to get too uh, into this one, but essentially it's going to receive the information from Clay. It's going to use. Uh, the LLM, which in this case is going to be a GPT 40 mini. And then I have a web scraping workflow where it's going to execute and then start to scrape the website. It scrapes the website and then it processes all that information and then sends it back. And so I have my open AI agent right here. And then I have my uh, Claude Haiku right here. And then I also did a Gemini flash agent too, which all do the same thing, same prompt, nothing's changed here. And so what I did was, um, and if you want to already check or check out my other video about how I set this up, by the way, please like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate that. I essentially send this data from Clay to my agents via N8N, and then it responds back to me. And so this is how you can really build your own agent, right? So if you think about it, LLMs, not to get off too, too off course, LLMs is essentially a brain. It is essentially a knowledge base where it's able to tokenize and interpret uh, information and then give you an output. And then an agent takes a tool like a web scraper, is going to scrape that website, give it context of what that is, and then therefore give you an output. So that's the difference here. So I went ahead and set it off. Uh, so this is GPT-40 mini attached to an agent. And again, it's very consistent. Uh, it's it's great. I mean, it's it comes down to cost, right? And so, uh, but some in some instances, not to give it all all the things, but my agent was uh, performing uh, a little inconsistently, and so I think it's largely because of the the Docker container that it's attached to. Not to get off course, but uh, I probably need to boost it up if I'm going to be ripping data through it, and so. But nonetheless, you could see this is actually the prompt that I was looking for, or the output, I should say. It's B2B, and it shows exactly what I'm looking for. And so you can see very consistently that it says B2B, and then whatever the company does, and then B2C, whatever the company does, 
And then here is another one. Uh, we have right here, B2B and B2C. This is exactly what it does. So you can see with that, um, it, it's exactly everything that I called it for and wanting to make sure uh, that the, the prompts are very consistent and knowing exactly uh, what I'm looking for, right? It's consistency. So good job, uh, OpenAI, GPT-4.0 is performing. This is on my agent, by the way. Um, so looking forward to seeing 4.0 Mini uh, attached to Clayagent, right? Now, Haiku was a little interesting, and I think a lot of these errors is exactly because I ran a 1,000 GPT-4.0 uh, workflows through my my NAN workflow, and I think what I need to do is just upgrade it. So that's, uh, don't just don't pay attention to the errors. So I just gotta basically do uh, more prompts and retry it. Um, so that's definitely no big deal here. So what I could see here is um, Haiku's output, right? But you could see based on this, it does the same thing. Again, very consistent, which is very interesting because the Clagent on the same LLM was not outputting consistent uh, outputs of what I'm talking about, like B to C, and then saying exactly what it is. And so uh, I wouldn't necessarily say it's on Haiku uh, because you can see here, I use the very same LLM, a different, my own web scraper, um, which was able to scrape the website and then know exactly what it is, right? And so uh, where's, where's my hugging face? Where's my hugging face? All right, there's my hugging face. Okay, so you could see Right here, it's B2B and B2C. Hugging Face offers a platform for machine learning collaboration, which is exactly what it is, right? So it was able to script the website and tell me what it is, uh, but very consistently, it has output the, the prompt that I commanded it to. Uh, that was uh, 4.0 Mini, excuse me. Uh, so that was 4.0 Mini, I, I stand corrected there. Uh, very, uh, by and large, this one, Haiku did the same thing. So I guess all, what I'm trying to say here is, there's very small comparisons, so it comes down to price and speed, right? Now, GBT Flash, again, you know, I gotta say, Google's bringing it on, you know. Uh, GBT, or excuse me, Gemini 1.5 Flash, again, speed, uh, it responded quick. I mean, it just ripped. You can see here, there's no errors. I mean, it just, it just ripped. So no big deal. The thing about, that I love about Gemini 2 uh, as well, Gemini 1.5 as well, I should say, is their rate limits on tokenization and their flash is all about speed, right? So I let it rip and it just came back. And you can see based on these outputs, it's exactly what I asked for. So it's very interesting here. Uh, it's very interesting. Now, and here's the other thing is I gave it essentially two tasks, each agent. I asked it to tell me if it's a B2B, a B2C or both, right? So I asked it to classify the company but then I also told it to basically analyze the website and then output whatever uh, they do and then uh, give it a summary. And you can see right here for even Notion, it, it, it's very consistent and it showed me very clean output data, especially at scale. And like you could see here, there, there was a, oh, this one, it wasn't, yeah, okay. I need a website to answer your question, fair enough. But all these right here, I mean, I just see very consistent B2B, B2C, and then a summary of it. So the output, in my opinion, is a lot more consistent. So I gotta tell you, it's a it's a hard battle. So GPT 4.0 Mini is definitely great because it's definitely a favorite, uh, and you know, OpenAI is definitely a, a disruptor. Uh, Gemini, I would say, is is right there you know so based on my analysis especially here uh, it's definitely good haiku is also really good but again you're probably fighting along those rate limits uh with anthropic depending on what tier you're on and then uh, of course gpt4 mini you know i would say in my opinion gpt 3.5 is probably legacy now i guess we can all admit that right because there's really no reason to run gpt 3.5 definitely for smaller tasks Less on the creative side, I would say I wouldn't run GPT-40 Mini. Um, I'd say experiment uh, to make sure. But again, when you're experimenting, just make sure you QC your stuff. Look at each and every prompt. I would recommend you run small samples of data and then make it sure that you're iterating your prompts to be able to uh, 
you know, isolate the errors or making sure you're reducing hallucinations, right? Because large language models will do that to you. They will spit out whatever they think, and then you put that in a merge tag or a variable, or you send that email off to some person. And uh, some of the things that come out, it's just, I mean, hey, it's all, it's all fun in the game, right? It's another day in the office. So, uh, so with that, I'm going to wrap up because uh, I don't want this video to get too long. But uh, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. I appreciate you watching all the way through. That is my analysis of all things AI and automation when it comes to GPT-40 Mini and as well as Haiku and then Gemini 1.5. Uh, nonetheless, happy claymaking and have a good, have a good day.